And well, um, like Nathan Hill just told you, I well, it's not really. I worked on the pre prefix in of all Chinese. It's just uh, that maybe um, I would like to um, give you some Denkanstöße and just to give you some hints what uh, the possible origins of a P prefix or the P uh, pre syllable might be. So uh, the function of the P prefix wasn't well really um, clear in Sagat 1999 and this was also um, somehow criticized by Miyake in the review of the book and I expected that maybe in the new, in the latest uh, by uh, Baxter and Saga, there would be some, some kind of, uh, um, there would be a chapter or something. And my point of, um, well, all Chinese is still pretty new to me, um, so I, I'm not really a, a specialist in all these Xiaosheng series and I just, uh, skim the, <laughs> the appendix and compare it to other Tibetan Burma languages like uh, like you can see here on the, field, uh, on, the, on the screen and my one of the methods I used for this um, short presentation was the fall leaves model uh, entertained by George Van Riem. Um, he doesn't reconstruct uh, a Stammbaum he just um, posits that there are various language groups and which um, are somehow related to each other. So, and the other method I am still working on is the internal reconstruction, uh, means that you have to um, make analysis um, of the shooting and compare the rhymes. And well, one of the major benefits of the comparative method is that you um, have, for example, Ru and Na, which is reconstructed with a vowel U, and there are these brackets, the famous brackets. And if you compare these um, these two words in Chinese with other Tibet, uh, other Tibetan Burma languages. Um, you somehow get um, certainty that the reconstruction of the vowel U is um, correct. Like in Tsangla, or in Sumba, also a Kianati language, or in Tibetan, or in Burmese. So, um, like I said, the function of the P prefix is still unknown. and. So one of my first steps was to figure out what the um, phonological property of the sound P is and in terms of place of articulation you um, well, you're aware that a P is bilabial which is also the M right? The only distinction which you can make between M and P is the manner of articulation because M is nasal and P is uh, plosive, but they are both um, bilabial. So I first um, looked into the finals and uh, maybe some of you have, might have heard of uh, Homo organic finals, which was already pointed out by uh, Robert Schaefer in the 40s, where he recognize the alternation between M and P uh, on the basis of the language data uh, of Hodgson. So homo organic finals are also um, uh, can be found in other or other scholars have pointed this out. Um, I think I missed Botman on the Botman Nicholas Clinton Botman on the handout, but he also um, talked about this. Boom, Saga, Matisov, Handel. <coughs> and, uh, well, I don't use the uh, proto Tibetan reconstruction by Matisov, but I think the example with Needle is uh, quite interesting because uh, if you see at these 
uh, have a look at the um, needle, for example, which has the red one here has the phonetic element of can, which is reconstructed with a um, up final, <coughs> whereas needle itself has <coughs> is reconstructed with uh, um. So there you have, for example, this homogenic final alternation. And so crossing the border um, and including other languages, you see that Tibet, other Tibetan Burman languages have mostly, or yeah, the, the great majority, have um, the rhymes up. I'm not sure about the Lepcha example. Maybe it's right, I don't know. Um, but well, you can see the alternation, right? So, well, it <coughs> is a noun, and if you maybe if we concentrate on on words, um, in and h might be a possible, um, might be rela a related group. And if you compare the examples, for example, the mal am is somehow, well, to me, it's tentatively um, related to uh, in and cognac, which is a modern Naga language, or Lushai, which was uh, mentioned yesterday, and he, which has hu, Lushai, Kalai, uh, Rob. So, there you again you have this homorganic initial alternation. Uh, in Aptare, a Kirantia language, um, has also this alternation where you, you see in nasal you have a nasal final, hang, hangs, and then plosive hakt. And there is this variation. So I wanted to talk about the P prefix, so I have to focus upon the initials and not the finals. So that was the first, um, that was the second step. So it, I thought maybe if, if there is a, if there are homorganic uh, finals, mm -hmm. there might be homorganic initials. So um, there is, for example, Yaka, also a Kiranti language, which has a dialectal variation, Marek Anga, Dumok Ka, which, well, I mean, you can argue that um, um, Ang is something uh, prophetic, which needs to be added, like uh, in um, school or like uh, Escuela, Ekol, you have this E, and here you have the same, but I think that uh, Nga is, might be the, the stem. And again, if you compare it to other languages like, uh, like Lepcha, you find these series, Lepcha, Tibetan, and all Chinese, which might maybe that's <laughs> that was just a thought, maybe it's just a, a similar development which you can observe in Yakka. So again, um, in other languages, like I mentioned, Lepcha or Bahing, which is a Kiranti language, you have um, this, <coughs> this uh, alternation between Mak and Myak, uh, Dai Kil, where the, the, the causative form is, is, uh, um, is, is formed by palatalization and not pharyngealization, but um, doesn't matter. Um, I think that Tibetan mak is cognate um, of mak, lepcha, and both of them have nasal um, bilabial sounds, which uh, on the other side you can see bahi, which has uh, the word Biakko, um, for example, which starts with a B, so with a plosive. So um, the question is, uh, which one is first? And if you 
compare, for example, other words like uh, ripe, cooked, boiled, written. You have in all these languages which are on the screen uh, an, an initial N. So in Kam, a Magaric language, you have this, um, this shift or this um, change or alternation between M and P. Um, cook by boiling, which has um, in Kam, in proto Kam, Min, but also the alternation between M and P. And I think that cook is probably a, a derivation of it, or maybe just an alternation, but still the same or a related root. So I haven't talked about the, about the, the causative prefix uh, in all Chinese, um, and I think that all the languages also have this um, this this prefix p. Uh, for example, Bodogaro languages, especially in Iba, well, it depends on, on the source. Um, it depends on the source so which you consult. But uh, for example, Diwa, uh, in the description of Joseph and Berlin, 2006, you have this alternation again uh, of Mu and Pu, which is a uh, ROM on the handout. I and Depna, 2014, doesn't have the the this alternation, but what is interesting is, for example, Prim, which uh, if you look at another Bodogaro language, uh, Kokborok, you can see that Ran means be dry, so uh, we might reconstruct a form like Prim, and then it, uh, by the time it merged together, but there was probably a, a P prefix or a perfect prefix. So again, in Moro you have the same, um, you have something similar. Dimas is also a Bodogaro language, which has um, also p prefixes. And the last example, fill up, make full, might have the um, tentative cognate in Chinese, Lem, I'm not sure, maybe. Behare, also, Kiranti, Kulum. Um, also Kidanti and Tibetan Bluk and as you can see there's this dialectal variation Lung and Ling maybe it's really related to each other so um, that was the comparative part and it's still the comparative part it's uh, about sending something the word sending so uh, Ling Ming, for example, might have the tentative cognates with Tibetan spring and in Kam, another language, Ri and Bahi, Li, Konyak, Li, although I'm not really um, sure about that. But um, you can see that M and P somehow correspond to each other. So. Um, well, the only internal reconstruction I did so far is um, I found uh, blunks in a uh, shooting um, in, in a node. So, and it has somehow a um, um, semantic relation. <coughs> and I think that it might be related to or have the same root. Because if we propose the sound change M to P and the sound change in to N, you might get this um, form, blanks. So after all, I think it's, it's um, like the homorganic um, in finals, the homorganic initials are somehow um, a common phenomenon which you can observe in languages and uh, so um, exactly <laughs> um, that's that's not on a ha handout I just wrote it yesterday in the evening um, there, are, there are these sound laws 
which uh, you see Mons Law, for example. Pre Tibetan Mr leads to Mr. And if it's um, if we if this sound law, uh, sound change Mr to B uh, is somehow on a somehow the same sound change, or we can treat it as a sound um, similar sound change. It would mean that um, Chinese and for all Chinese, um, Sinitic and Tibetan share um, the same sound law, uh, sound change, which is a shared innovation, which makes them um, related to each other, and we can maybe reject the term Sino-Tibetan and. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, maybe except Tibet Burman or Trans Himalayan. So these are um, some references I haven't put on the handout because I forgot to put them. Um, yeah. And I'm done. <laughs>